everyone how are you so what's up everyone listen i'm so happy to be back welcome back to conciencias con cocktails my name is javier pedrosa and i'm your host so our weekly show here is streaming live every thursday at 6 p.m uh here on celebrity magazine celebrity latinx facebook instagram twitter on youtube you name it and we are on it <laughs> so who's you know working from home who's ready to decompress it is six o'clock and we are going to, you know, just take a little bit slow and just relax, calm down from our day, right? For those of you who join us for the first time, know that we have created a fun and chill environment where we are unapolog unapologetically asking and discussing every type of question or situation because we understand nothing is going to change until we all get the conversation started, right? So with that said, I also think it's extremely important to have at least 15 minutes a day where we can dance and laugh and just shake it off and, you know, just 
shake off our daily worries, right? So we have dedicated the last 15 minutes of the show to a highlight singers, dancers, artists, and culture. So it is going to be amazing because we created CO3 Solivity Lounge, where today you are going to learn how to salsa with a world champion directly from Puerto Rico, Miss Charlotte Serrano. So I cannot wait for you guys to, to meet her and to learn how to dance. And before that, I am going to say salute. Cheers to all of you guys. I know we've had a long week with primaries and everything. So cheers, take a moment. I'm gonna take a sip. <laughs> mm, strawberry margaritas. Recipe is on my Facebook, on my Instagram. You can make this at home like I just did and it's easy breezy blender and you are done, ready to go. So now we're going to jump into a segment that uh, we are going to be calling the spotlight. And in spotlight, we're going to be discussing top trending news around the world, right? So tonight, I want to highlight a few Black progressives who had what we would consider to be a successful night in uh, Democratic primaries. Two New York candidates not poised to become first openly gay Black Afro-Latino men in Congress. I mean... This is amazing. New York City Councilman Richie Torres and progressive lawyer Mondaire Jones had an incredible night. We're all crossing our fingers. You know, the ballots are not all counted due to the COVID. So, but from what it looks like, uh, it's going to be a good one. Also, um, you know, if we have to think if de Democrats have two key pillars of their base fired up and politi politically activated, you know, women and uh, black voters, that could be a game changer as, you know, number 45's uh, ratings continue to suffer. Also um, in a major, major win for progressive Democrats, Jamal Bowman has claimed victory in Tuesday's primary election. Congratulations, Mr. Jamal, you did it. We're so, so proud. We're proud of everyone who voted. And also Bowman tweeted, and I quote, I'm a black man raised by a single mother in a housing project. That story doesn't usually end in Congress, but today that 11 year old beaten by police is about to be your representative. I can't wait to get to DC and cause problems for those maintaining the status quo. And quote, that is amazing. I mean, that, that's an amazing tweet that Mr. Bowman put out and he is absolutely right. And to wrap up our spotlight, we want to say congratulations y felicidades to progressive star Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, better known as AOC, easily, easily dispatched former CNBC reporter Michelle Caruso Cabrera with 73% of the votes. Okay, so AOC is definitely here to stay. I... I'm loving what I'm seeing, and it looks like the future is colorful, and that is amazing to all of us. So that wraps up our uh, tonight's sp uh, spotlight. So we are now going to, I, I, oh my God, I'm so excited for you guys to get to know uh, our first guest today, because he is one of the kindest yet strongest people I know. Um, I feel extremely blessed to know him. He is an author, celebrity makeup artist. He's a daytime Emmy Award winning hairstylist and a host. I mean, he has his own podcast titled Gratitude is a Journey. Uh, D'Angela Thompson has earned quite the reputation and has collaborated with stars like Salma Hayek, Wendy Williams, Scarlett Johansson, Bethany Frankel, the late Aretha Franklin, Kim Coles, Kevin Hart, Morris Chestnut, and, you know, Regina King, just to mention a few, you know, it's just very casual. But please, please, please put your hands together at home, take a sip, and help me welcome the fabulous Mr. D'Angelo Thompson. Hi, Javier, how are you? Hi, how are you? Happy Pride. Happy Pride, and thank you for that intro. That was amazing. <laughs> I'm only speaking the truth. I am only speaking the truth, my friend. Um, so you're in LA right now. Yes, I am. Yes, please, let's, 
Cheers, cheers, cheers. Salute to you. Cheers, my love. Mm. Mm. So tell me, how is LA right now? How, are you guys celebrating Pride? I saw some news that we did some things for Black Lives and, and Pride. Talk to, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, during one of the protests about over a week ago, they did uh, marry Pride and the Black Lives Matter protests, also for trans Black lives. So what's beautiful is that we're seeing a convergence of many causes under the umbrella of Black Lives Matter, which is a right. good thing. Um, so LA is, I think, like around the country and around the world, it's very active, you know? So um, just very, very thankful. I know, and it's kind of insane. I mean, we're celebrating 51 years of our Stonewall riots. No. You know, like, this is incredible. This is, we are celebrating a 50th year of our Pride Parade, which, you know, unfortunately we can't, you know, march, but we are here and we are so, um, you know, just so excited that we get to celebrate this. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. This amazing moment, this am amazing milestone. So I want to know, um, first, let's take it back, right? Let's take it back all the okay. way to the beginning. And can you tell us about where you grew up? Okay, I was, I was born in Mississippi. And I lived there till I was about age 12. So my formative years were in Mississippi, which I'm very thankful for. I learned a lot about nature. I took a lot of time to observe people and the environment. I also understood very clearly what racism was, very mm -hmm. clearly, just by how whites and blacks interacted with one another. So then when I was you know, thrust into, the, into Chicago, the inner city, what was multicultural, it was um, very different. But I'm so glad that my family moved there because it opened up my world. Wow. And how old were you when you moved to uh, Chi-Town? I moved to Chi-Town at 12 and I was there from grammar school, eighth grade and through high school. And I moved to New York at 18. Wow. That's amazing. So tell me, did Mississippi or Chicago, did they have any influence on your, uh, you know, pursuing a career in beauty? Oh yeah, I would even say Mississippi for sure, even though Mississippi is one of the poorest states, right? Right. But yet when churches would go, when the women would go to church, the fanfare, the beauty, the hat, the hairdos, you know, the gloves, the dresses, definitely the African American aesthetic was very strong and I paid attention to it. And then as I got older, I noticed I was always sketching women, always sketching faces and dresses. So I think as a child, I already knew what I was going to do. I just didn't have a clear word for it. Right. And did you have somebody when you were growing up that you, you were able to look at, like say, or did that come later on when you got to New York or how did that work? I would say it was always the women in my life, always, you know, my mom, my mom, my cousins, my aunts, but also as I got older, my friends. And I think New York was definitely more crucial to that transition because more friends started pushing me towards beauty because I was the person like, hey, what do you think of my hair? What do you think of my lipstick? Should I wear this? You know, I was always engaged in the creative process. Oh my God, amazing. And so you, I know, because again, you are a hairstylist, you're a makeup artist, you are a host. I mean, you're just a creative, creative soul all around. Yeah. Um, the question I gets for me now is, you know, when you decided to say, okay, I'm doing beauty, this is what I'm gonna be focusing. Although, you know, the thing that is that I most admire about you is how you're also a producer. You're also doing so many amazing things that, you know, don't fall under one, you know, category, except, you know, all creative, which is all amazing. So how mm -hmm. do you juggle all of these different things? You know, it's very easy, actually. I walk through my life, not thinking I'm a one dimensional person. I have never let people tell me you're only an artist or you're only a lawyer, you're only a doctor. I know some amazing talented people that are doctors that can sing better than anyone on the charts right now. Right. But they chose, they, they felt like I only can be a doctor. I can't be a singer. So for me, as I became a makeup artist, I was leaning towards a lot of other things. I was like, okay, Eventually, I do want to produce. 
you know? And you can be an angel producer, which means that you don't have to be on set. You can help with raising money. You can help, you can give money. And you also get residuals from that. So that's a thing that I can do kind of passively. So I'm all about passive income, you know? Right. I can be on set for 16 hours, but my book is making money. I can be on set right. for 16 hours, but a film I worked on is making money, you know? So that's how I think. I love it. I love it. And speaking of your book, I mean, number one, thank you for giving us a book that one of your viewers are going to get at home. Yeah. Um, but also, I, D'Angelo has just written a new book, uh, mm -hmm. a, a Hundred Days of Gratitude, Exploring the Seen and Unseen Blessings in Life. Talk yeah. to us about your book. Congratulations. Thank you. So when I moved to L.A. in 2017, December, Javier, I was physically exhausted. Like I literally went to sleep for three weeks because I just could, I had to just decompress everything that I had done that year. And when January came into 2018, I sat down to write this book, a hundred days of gratitude. So I wanted to really talk about what I was grateful for and to really be in that consciousness of gratitude always. Mm -hmm. And this book led into two others. So all of 2018, I was just writing, working and writing working and writing. So gratitude saved my life in many ways. Gratitude is kind of my, the hum or the beat that I try to walk every day. Yeah, and gratitude is a lot of what we need today. I mean, especially during this current political climate. So, you know, I like to hear from you, you know, because we have our private conversations, uh, right. you know, and, and you know, D'Angelo is a, an African-American LGBTQ plus, gentlemen, you know, and so I think a lot of people need to hear your voice because yeah. and your and your voice speaks when even when your mouth is not moving. That's how <laughs> how powerful you are. Um, but tell us, like, what are your thoughts on the current events, you know, surrounding Black Lives Matter? You know, Javier, it's multi-layered. It's not. Um, yes, Black men are being attacked. Black men are like being hunted you know, if you will. And a lot of people in the past have tried to explain it away, but you can't explain it away when you see very vivid videos of what's going on. Right. And now a lot of old cases are resurfacing. So that is definitely paramount to me. And being a person of color that is gay, that is important to me too, because of so many people, especially trans, I know many, and I know you do as well, and I think about them at times when we're at parties and they walk home or, you know, they're out and about or they meet the wrong person that has such animosity towards them that they want to kill them. So I'm very evolved and very involved. Evolved in the sense that I think I was quiet and silent for a while right. because I really didn't want to offend people. I didn't want to um, really state what I was thinking. But in this, during this time, we have to speak up. We have to vote. We have to stop separating ourselves, not only amongst Blacks and, and Afro-Latinos and Latinos, but we have to stop separating, our, separating ourselves amongst the gay culture as well. Correct, you know? correct. I know some of the sad news that we've seen is, you know, uh, we understand, obviously, and again, being both men of color, mm -hmm. we understand how we're raised. We understand how, you know, our minds are pretty much trained to think a specific way, right? Like right. from very little, you are supposed to get married. You have 2.5 kids. You have the dog, the cat, the white picket fence, you know, all of that, which I know that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was, it was quite the transition to, to be able to understand, to allow myself to even come into the same space as a trans person, because I yes. had no, no example of anyone mm -hmm. who was trans. Um, and obviously no one in my family was talking to me about being uh, homosexual or being openly gay. There was none of that right. conversation. So how was it for you, like Mississippi, again, Chicago, you know, like how was that? Were you were you exposed to it that it that it kind of makes the transition a little bit easier? Because I had to educate myself. I had to educate myself on Sylvia Rivera, Marsha P. Johnson, 
Dorman Delavier, what non-binary yes. means, what you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like all of it. I had to literally literally uh, say yeah. I'm the same. I'm the same. Um, definitely it wasn't talked about in Mississippi. Chicago, yes, because it was a city and you would see people say on the bus or downtown. Or if you went out into the nightlife, you would you would meet people. But I wouldn't say that I was fully engaged. New York opened me up. You know, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, there are many types of people, not just lesbian, gay, you know, right. or drag queen. There's trans. There's bi. There's this, and yes. it's an education for us too as gay people. You know, I yes. misspoke once to an actress who is a transgender actress, and. She corrected me and said, oh, you're talking about a cisgender actress. And I was like, cisgender? What are you talking about? <laughs> but mm -hmm. I took it in and I was like, okay. And I apologized. And I said, you know what? I need to do some more learning. So right. I think if I can say that, who is exposing you too, to a lot of people, that people who don't have a lot of exposure should do the same. You know? Absolutely. Especially now that we have you know, we've had such amount of downtime, right? With COVID and having to be home. Like I tell everyone, take this time to learn, take this time to educate yourself. Tell us right. what you've been doing with COVID. I mean, again, I know that because you were traveling back and forth, law and order sets, and we did the a, a music video that's going to come out. So we can't talk about it yet. Right. Um, but we, you know, we were, we were busy, we were going. So how are you handling Corona? Like, you know, I think it's a blessing in disguise and I know many lives have been lost, but I do think it's a blessing in disguise. I know for me and I know for you and many others, we are so centered and focused right now. And we realize that we're going to honor our dreams. You yes. know, no longer will I just work for the coin, <laughs> you know, exactly. it has to be a passion that I'm really enthralled in. So COVID is a blessing in disguise. It's put a um, universal pause on life, you know? So people can really check in, not only with themselves, but with the people they love, their children, et cetera. Absolutely. And I know that you've been outspoken, you know, in um, the way it's been handled, right? Oh. Which mm -hmm. I know that is, quite the, the sensitive subject, but how, how do you feel? Like, how do you feel about the way that this administration has handled coronavirus? I think about the administration, but I also think about citizens around the country. We are so disconnected from one another. Mm. If you see that over 100,000 people have passed away, and most of them are on the coastal cities, LA, New York, and you still think you're not affected, that to me is almost, that's a sickness, that's a virus, yeah. to, to only think about yourself, you know? Absolutely, oh, I need it's so eat. selfish. I need to take a haircut, you know? To only think about yourself when hundreds of thousands of Americans have died. I won't talk about the administration because we all know people who, who rally behind Trump will always rally behind Trump. And I have friends that do that no matter what type of conversation I try to have with them. Oh, I know. Them, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. I've had, I've had quite the conversations as well, you know, with friends and, you know, even family members who, um, you know, just have their way of thinking. And it's just right. very interesting to me because again, like some of us, we were raised the same way. We were, you know, we have again, family that, and, and so it's very interesting to me what happens. I mean, we all stay very respectful of each other and we all, you know, I told them, I cannot wait to have this conversation face to face so we can really, you know, get to know. Now we're like, you know, adults and we're making, decisions mm. that you know affect us all so that's why i'm very 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 involved with the politics aspect of it without you know being in front of politics um right. but how exciting is it that we uh may have two gay congressmen it's amazing it's amazing i think this is a shift that needs to happen i think more young people even people in our generation should step up and run for office mm -hmm. and it may sound very um biased on my part i think we need to get rid of the dinosaurs i'm sorry on both sides of the aisle right on absolutely both sides. on both sides absolutely i can't wait for uh miss aoc to do her thing 
Mm -hmm. uh, in the coming years, because I think that we see a, a clear trajectory for, for, sure. for, for her, sure. you know, yeah. which we won't talk about because we won't uh, jinx it. But right. talk to us about the uh, Hollywood industry. I mean, I know, again, with COVID, everything has paused. Productions mm -hmm. have just stopped. Like, I know that you've been writing, obviously, taking the time to do what you've been doing, creating. What's going on with work? Is Hollywood saying we're coming back on phase three? What's happening with that? Well, I think initially they were working on the logistics. How are we going to come back? How are we going to protect our crew, our talent? You know, how are we going to insure ourselves? Because from what I was hearing, insurance agencies were not wanting to insure projects. And I think that was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. We're getting closer to opening up some non-union and some union shows are shooting right now, right. You know, but, but in states that have completely opened up. So not necessarily in New York and LA, but I believe Georgia, Michigan, and a few other places. Um, I, there was a meeting with a DGA last week. There's a meeting with my union this Sunday. And I'm sure once we all have information, things will open up. August, September, you know, slowly, you know, right. but the thing is, what if it spikes again? So if it seriously spikes like it was in the spring, it may not and be. And like they're telling us that is going to, I mean, pretty it's much uh, Dr. Fauci is like September, October, we're going to see something. Um, and I think he, uh, from his point of view is due to the fact that we have not been re behaving responsibly. Um, going out beaches and you know all uh, I don't know if the protest numbers have added up yet I think it has yeah so so yeah so it's been a lot we've been dealing with so much it's, it's been one thing after the other but one great thing that's going to come out of this year is that you are going to be a host on Celebrity Magazine and yes. you're having your own show can we talk a little <laughs> bit about that I know you don't want to give too much away well, it's called Beauty and Gratitude. There's going to be guests per episode. And it's a, around what I know, which is beauty and gratitude. So I want to marry the two because I think you can work on the outer as much as you want. But if this is not good inside and you're not centered inside. So I want to marry the two and really start a movement, Raphael. I called you Raphael. Oh, my God. Javier, you really start a movement. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you've been going from interview to interview to interview and interview. So I completely, yeah. completely forgive you, Mr. D'Angelo. Thank you. <laughs> I call it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another thing that I want people to know is what a huge philanthropist you are. I mean, I know that you believe in creating a circle cycle of abundance, you know, while you contribute to humanity. And we've worked on benefit committees together for like the Latino yes. Commission on AIDS, uh, mm -hmm. creating galas and fundraisers and all that jazz. So mm -hmm. I guess my question, what would you say are some important ways to give back, right, to the community, especially, especially now? If you... If you're stuck at home and you can't be present at a protest, definitely donate monetary. But besides donating, also find out what the org is doing with the money. Like, okay, mm -hmm. are you helping bail out protesters? Are you helping with the murders? Are you helping with the families with the legal fees? You know, are you making sure they're not being taken advantage of by lawyers? So there's so many things you can do and in a philanthropic way, you can create your own foundation and make sure money is being resourced, you know, in the best way possible. So for me, being active is not only money, it's also your time. It's also sharing things that are going on in the world and making sure like the young lady, Crystal, Crystal Kaiser, you, did you hear about that? The young lady who murdered her John? Yes. Yeah, so the guy was holding her hostage and it was sex trafficking and then he was trying to force himself on her and she retaliated and ended up killing him. Um, that is, you know, she protected herself and I don't think she should be in prison for it. So one mm -hmm. thing I did, a friend shared it with me and then I shared it with my circle and I got someone involved actually in New York 
that works with sex trafficking and domestic violence. And she called around the country, you know, with her resources statewide. And thank God the young lady is now out of jail. So activism does work. It works. Philanthropy does work, you know? So. Yes, I mean, and we've experienced it. I know that you've shared, and this is this is who you are. You shared, you know, when you see people in need, you share. And we've even done the same. We we actually, I mean, it literally brought tears to my eyes that we were able to help somebody in Cuba. You know what I mean? Yes. So let, yes. I'll tell our viewers about that moment because that was so huge for me. Are you talking about the artist from Cuba that we brought here? The one that we sent, uh, remember we posted about the COVID, they weren't yeah. getting any help. Your friend from Italy. Yes, so Mariela Garriga, she is an actress, a Cuban actress that has done films in Italy and in the States. And I met her on the set of Law and Order actually, and we just felt really connected and we kept in touch. She posted something on Instagram about not being able to get food and things to her family during the time of COVID. Right. And I remember a friend speaking about it. And I was like, oh my God, I know a resource to get at least the basics to your family there. You know, because I have a friend that goes to Cuba often. I reached out to him. He had all the information. We, we sent it to Mariella. You gathered information. We all gathered information. And she was able to send money, food, and whatever they needed, you know, and they, they were really having a hard time, almost like Venezuela, which is interesting during the time of COVID. And I hope, I don't know, but I hope they're doing better now. But um, right. it was a scary situation for her. Yeah, I mean, I remember thinking when you sent me the thing, my God, what can we do, you know, with a place like Cuba, you know, that is so restricted. And literally what we did was share our social medias and put their stories on our stories. I know that Brian also from Solivity Magazine, you know, did as well. Like we really just all, you know, came together to, to help this family. And it was so, 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 so beautiful. I thought it was so beautiful. Um, yeah. Another thing that I want to ask you is because I am secretly obsessed with her. <laughs> and I just know that she's amazing. In my mind, we're besties. But Miss Regina King, mm, yes. every time she wins, every time a movie comes, we are like screaming. I mean, this mm -hmm. is from like 227. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the day. Way, way back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm so happy to have seen that, you know, the, the industry has shown her love, you know, for, because again, she's been at it, Angela Bassett, like all these beautiful queens that are coming through, you know, like how does it make you feel to be able to, to be kind of that last look, right? Because I know, you know, from a stylist perspective, like mm -hmm. before our clients go to on stage or on set or whatever, we're the last people that they see right That's and we're here pumping them up and you know how it is you know making sure that the, all the vibes are beautiful and everything is all good how does it feel for you to work with these ladies like you, and gentlemen you know, like you like for me someone told me once they're like you're the last person i see especially in a talk show environment that i see before i go on stage and i'm interviewed and I always kept it in my mind. So I always know that my energy has to be right. It has to be centered um, when I'm dealing with a client. Long story short, I met Regina King on the Wendy Williams show. She was a guest and she trusted me to do her makeup. She didn't come with the whole glam squad. I did her makeup and I did a little tweak with her eyeliner that she loves. She has gorgeous eyes. They're kind of like does. this hazel green. They're beautiful. And even the shape um, of her eye. Yeah, she's it's a gorgeous stunning. woman. And she she actually shouted me out on the show, you know, because she was like, D'Angelo just, you know, did it, you know? Yes. So I was very grateful. Currently though, I think my friend Morel Hollis works with her um, now, but she's always been gracious. And for me, 
I don't see them as celebrities. I don't hold them up in this like high, like, oh, you're a God kind of thing. I mm-hmm. see them as people who are successful in their industry. Right. And I'm there as an asset to make them even better. You know, I don't go into any situation bowing down to anybody. My mom taught me that and I'm very grateful for that. You know, I love that. I love that so much. And if you can tell the industry something, especially now, right, with everything that's Mm -hmm. going on, like, what would it be? Because I know, you know, again, from our experiences of work, there's not a lot of people that look like us you know, behind the scenes and all that jazz. Like, what would you say? I mean, we, we all, we're pretty much aware of what's happening in front of the camera, which we still understand that we're underrepresented and all that jazz. But talk to us about behind the scenes in Hollywood. Like, what do they still need to do? I noticed once Me Too happened, I did notice there were shifts happening in the past year on set. There were more uh, women in key roles there were more LGBTQ people on behind the scenes as well and in front of the camera. So mm-hmm. I have seen a shift in the past year. However, I think people just need to be more authentic, more transparent. Mm-hmm. You know, don't pay one makeup artist 500 and pay another one 2,500 and they're doing the exact same job. Mm-hmm. You know, it's also about what you choose to accept as an artist, but also being transparent. You know, I've had angels on set pull me aside and say to me, hey, what are you making? I don't mind talking about money. And literally, I told this one young lady what I was making. She's like, D'Angelo, that's not cool. She's like, everyone here, because we're all doing the same job. We're all working with these celebrities. Everyone here is making around. She gave me a number. Javier almost fell out. I was literally $500 under everyone else oh. there. And I'm like, and I took my temperature. I didn't say anything right away. (laughs) And a day or two later, I went to the producer and I pulled her aside and I had a conversation. I said, I'm not only did I have two talent to everyone's one talent. So Mm. I had a male and a female, everyone else had one talent. I was getting less. And I, and I said to her exactly how I'm saying it to you. How is that? How is that? And she started to backtrack. I hope I get to run into her again during this time. Because people like that are going to be called out. People like that are going to lose their jobs. And there's sadly far too many of them, you know? And there's sadly what? The, sadly, there are far too many of them out there that yes. are duplicitous, that are not uh, transparent, that are not, they're too busy with nepotism, you know? And nepotism doesn't breed diversity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know? so, yeah, absolutely. So tell us, do you have any brothers or sisters? I do. I'm the oldest of four. Yes. Really? Four oh, other? All just... Oh, wow. How are you in relationship with them? We're good. I, I love them. I'm close with my sister and my brothers. I'm kind of the, the parent, not the big brother. Right. Um, and my sister and I are very close, you know, so... It's That's interesting. Right. They live in, my brother lives in Dallas with his two kids, his sons and his wife. And I have another brother in Memphis, Tennessee. He kind of moves around a lot, so I never know where he is. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> right. She's an educator in Chicago. So she's based in Chicago and she has two children, adult children now, actually. So amazing. Oh my God, you must be like the best uncle in the world. I try to be. You have to check with my nieces <laughs> and nephews. I try to be. I try to get them things that are useful, you know, whether it's great to give a kid a money, but also I'm like, use this money and do something with it. You know, either open a, a stock account, open a savings account, you know, do something with it, you know. Yeah, that's so important. Yeah. We have to teach, especially our kids and, you know, especially mm-hmm. our kids of color about yes. finance uh, yeah. from a younger, uh, younger finance and technology. I think yes. those are the two things that our, our kids really are, are lacking. They're behind um, and we're seeing that. So I'm, I'm happy that this trend is now getting more of our kids into computers and all of that. Um, right. I have a question because, again, you're one of the sources of uh, positivity, you know, gratitude, all of that, the beauty in life. Who do you look at 
to kind of like draw inspiration and you know like because i know i have your if somebody was to ask me this question i would be like well deangela thompson mm -hmm. is one of mine mm -hmm. so like who would be those people for you javier's the same it's friends it's friends my chosen family you know it's um it also there are people that are leaders in like wellness like uh Abraham Hicks, I love listening to. I love listening to, um, I have a book now, like Reiki practices. So I do a lot of meditation and a lot of Reiki practicing, like scanning my body, which I just learned over about a month and a half ago. So that's been really helpful. So really seek down information is, is the key. And your family, your chosen family. So yes. most friends are go-getters, optimistic, not naysayers and the naysayers that I had around me are no longer in my life. They're gone, you know? So um, that's where I find my inspiration. Definitely. And my spiritual core, you know, mm. I do believe in God, you know, I don't necessarily follow a religion, but I definitely consider myself a spiritual man. Yeah. I know one of the amazing people that you introduced me to Dr. Beatrice um, mm -hmm. Perry Oh mm -hmm. my God, what a woman, what a woman. Yes. Every time I see her, every time I hear her, I am just like, oh. wow, this is, oh. a, this is a force to be reckoned yeah. with, you know? She's yeah. amazing. All right, she, so now we're, go ahead, what'd you say? I said that she speaks truth. She you know? speaks all the truth every day, all day. I mean, if you guys don't follow her on Instagram, follow her because she is Again, she's just one of those voices that you hear and you're just like, everything is going to be okay. Yes. I'm going to be all right. And everything's going to work out, you know? Thank so you. I want, D'Angelo, give us your social media. So everybody who has a question about anything that has to do, I'm trying to create a strong virtual family so that way we can, you know, kind of flip it around a little bit where we don't utilize yeah. social media for negativity and, mm -hmm. you know, turn into positive. So tell us your social media. So two things, uh, DT Beauty 71, that's Instagram at DT Beauty 71. And then I have a podcast on anchor.fm. It's called Gratitude is a Journey. Yes. Anchor.fm forward slash D'Angelo dash Thompson. Yes. And it's also on Spotify, which is also a great way to, to listen to it. And I've listened yeah. to it and it's really, really great. And Thank last you. thing before you leave, because again, I know you're super busy, oh, but yeah, yeah. I know you just produced a movie mm -hmm. and it's out there, film festivals. Talk to us. A, can you talk to us a little bit about that? I can, yes. It's called Burden, written and directed by Nathan Hell Williams. I'm one of the co-executive producers. And it focuses on exactly what's going on right now. It's a black executive, the day in his life, and how he has micro and macro aggressions towards racism. You know. Oh wow. So it's called Burden, and we are showing around festivals. We also have screenings that we do with corporations for diversity and inclusion. So it's been a powerful tool and I'm glad to be a part of it. That sounds That's amazing, amazing. So everyone get uh, D'Angelo's book, mm -hmm. 100 Days of Gratitude, right? Yes, yeah. we love it. Tell us where we can find it. You will be able to find it in about two weeks on amazon.com, Barnes and Noble, many online retailers. And awesome. someone will win a book today. So one of your viewers will get to you know, win a book. So you tell me, I just need their address and I'll put it in the mail. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So everybody sends us anything that you wanna know about D'Angelo, any th concern, anything you just send it to us and we are going to answer every single question because I think it's really important for everyone to have visualization to understand yeah. that we come in all shapes, colors, sizes, you know, uh, preferences, everything that so we're all very different. And as yeah. long as you have somebody that you can look at and say, I can be like that person, right. I think that really makes a difference on you. Yes, I agree. I agree. 
Well, D'Angelo, I love you, my brother. And I have to tell you, I cannot wait to hug you. And, you know, I'm sending you a huge virtual, virtual hug. Um, and just stay safe, please. So then that way we can see each other, hopefully, for the Cielo Gala this year, which will hopefully be in October. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for having me, Javier. And congratulations on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you. Stay tuned because Charlotte Serrano is about to come on and yes. teach us some salsa. Okay. Yes. She's actually from Puerto Rico. She's going to be with us uh, in about five minutes. So I'm going to give you guys five minutes. Refill your cocktails, do what you need to do, and then come right back with us because we are going to dance some salsa. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. See you soon. Bye. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity and fame, living your passion, feeling your life has purpose. Solidity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play. And doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. Solivity Magazine brings you the best in inspiration on Solivity TV. Check out our new show. your calendars for Solivity Magazine shows by going to Solivity.com now. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back, my people. Um, all right, guys. So now we have ESPN World Salsa Champion, who was born in Ponce, Puerto Rico. She has made appearances on TV shows like Mira Quien Baila on Univision and has also performed with artists like Don Omar at the Billboard Awards. Welcome, everyone. Charlotte Serrano. Hi, Charlotte. Can we hear you? <laughs> Charlotte is in Puerto Rico. And we cannot wait to get her. She is there. Hey. There we are. <laughs> How are you, sweetie? I'm doing fine. I'm very excited, actually, to um, be here and dance in some salsa with you guys. Maybe I know. Right How are things in Puerto Rico right now? Things are going on pretty well. Um, we're kind of little by little getting back to our normal life, or at least trying to. Right. Some kind, some, some new normals that we're trying to, to create today, right? That's so right. first, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and teaching our viewers how to salsa. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go make us a cocktail. Okay. And so you can go ahead and take the floor. The dance floor is yours. All righty. Okay. Thank you, Javier. So go, yes, go do your cocktail. And then, well, I teach them how to do some basic salsa stuff. And then they could, from home, Sip up a little bit of that, um, what they uh, they make uh, by them. 
Alrighty, guys. Um, my name is Charlotte, as Javier have introduced me to. I hope you guys enjoy this 10, 15 minutes of salsa dancing with me. So this is what we call a crash course dance um, class. And we're going to do, um, I'm going to put some music first so that you can um, kind of loosen it up. And you are allowed to um, take a sip of your drink also. Let's put some music, go over the basic steps, and then from there, I'm going to break it down really easy. And trust me, you will be dancing in a few minutes. salsa a little more excited and it takes it from level one to two to a high um intensive level or an advanced dancer and that's the difference between maybe a pedestrian and a dancer or a beginner and a meter or advanced dancer but to break it down really easy so that at least you get a chance to um dance one two songs in that birthday party or even on your virtual party um, from home. Your basic step, and I'm going to turn around so you can um, do it with me if in case you want to practice the steps. And it goes forward with your left and back with your right. And step one, one, two, three, and five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and five, six, seven. So, you are going to do, you're going to make sure you march and you transfer your weight. Always transfer your weight from your left, right, left, and then from your right, left, right. And march left, right, left, and right, left, right, and left, right, left, and right, left, right. Or you can actually think about it as if you are inside a bucket or inside a tile. And you're basically taking out your left leg out of that bucket and tapping inside the bucket. In and bringing yourself back inside that bucket. Outside, tap in and bring it together. Out, tap in, together. Out, tap in, together. And that is your basic. And if I'm going to do it sides, you're going to go out, Two, three, and five, six, seven. And one, two, three, and five, six, seven. And one, two, three, and five, six, seven. And that's your basic. Let's do side to side, which is our second move. Really easy. And this one, I can actually face front, so you could um, mirror me. And you're going to go with your left leg. Out the bucket. Tap inside the bucket and bring your legs together. Outside, tap in and bring them together. Out, tap, together. And five, six, seven. And one, two, three. And outside, tap, together. Out, tap, together. And make sure you guys are not step touching, okay? No step touch. The difference between a step touch and a side to side, a lot of people do, does um, make the same mistakes. They step touch. 
I don't want you to be step touching, okay? We, we could jam to another style of music, but not to salsa. Alrighty, so I want you to do side to side and not step touch, okay? And one, two, three, and five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and of course, lady, you can actually use your smile, your posture, your hair, you need to be happy, enjoy this, the music, okay? And five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and five, six, seven, and one, two, three, and tramper to your basic, one, and five, and one, and five, and one, and side to side, and one, two, three, and five, six, seven. All right, so those are the two basic steps. We're gonna do it with music, so get ready. Charlotte Serrano. That was so, so good. Thank you so, so much, Charlotte, for kicking off our CO3 Solivity Lounge today. I mean, you're the first one that gets to uh, come through uh, CO3 Solivity Lounge because we are highlighting, like I said earlier, singers, dancers, poets. So guys, send me a DM and you can be featured here on our CO3 Lounge. So again, thank you so much, Charlotte. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Besitos, besitos, and we will talk soon. I'll see you soon, okay? Thank you for our class. And, and wait, before you go, please give us your social media handle. All righty, my social media pages. Yes, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything under Charlotte dot Serrano. I'm going to say it, Charlotte. Punto Serrano. Make sure you spell my last name correctly, and that is S E R R A N O. Amazing. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next time we'll have you on because I know you're hosting some shows. So we will talk about that in the future. Okay. Besito. Bye bye. All right, guys. So listen, we are wrapping up our show. I am so, so happy. How are those cocktails, guys? <laughs> <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers. I know so yeah. Charlotte has been dancing her heart out. Here's to an amazing, wonderful. wonderful. Okay. 
amazing Thursday and an amazing Friday and an amazing weekend to you all. Don't forget to come back next week where we are going to be chatting with Amara La Negra. Next Thursday, again at 6 p.m. right here on Solivity. So listen, guys, remember to stay curious, be gorgeous, y amable. Gracias. See you later. Thank you for watching Conciencias Con Cocktails with Javier Pedrosa right here on Soul Liberty TV every Thursday at 6 p.m. So Liberty Magazine brings you the best in inspiration on Soul Liberty TV. Yeah. Check out our new shows. your calendars for Solivity Magazine shows by going to solivity.com now.